praise the Lord. Good evening and welcome again to another Nightline program. We are very, very excited uh, for the privilege, the opportunity, and uh, just the sheer pleasure of being able to come back to this studio tonight. This program is live, and as you can tell by all that which is surrounding us, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. It really and truly is. And tonight, our prayer is that something will be said, something will be read, something will be sung, something will be played, something will be ministered in some way or the other that will just simply encourage you. Something will come forth from this program tonight that will edify you, that will build you up in your faith. And of course, if you have any questions concerning faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, if you have any questions concerning um, what, what must you really do to be saved? There is a number on the bottom of that screen that you can call right now. And there are those who are ready, willing, and able to discuss just exactly how you can come to God tonight through the Lord Jesus Christ. I sincerely hope and pray that uh, you know that we're not here for ourselves. We're not here for a show. We're not here for any other reason than but to lift him up. You see, because Jesus Christ was lifted up on a cross 2,000 years ago, because he died, was buried, and rose again, we count it an honor tonight to lift him up with all that is within us. We're going to be talking throughout the program tonight about Matthew 7, 13 through 14. Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life. And those who find it are few. That's our scripture for the evening. Our music will be by Danny Bishop. Danny is a local guy. He's... Uh, getting ready to sing right now. And then we're going to come back and talk with Scott Schuler, an author that I believe you and I together will just thoroughly enjoy getting to know. But right now we're going to go to Danny as he sings, God rest ye merry gentlemen. In fact, he's going to play it instead of singing.
Thank you so much, Danny Bishop. While he was not singing, per se, man alive, he can make that get guitar sing like nobody that I, I've, I've ever heard. I may have heard somebody who can play like him, but nobody comes to mind. But he will be playing again, and he will be singing throughout the program. We are very, very grateful, very honored indeed, to have on the program with us tonight Scott Schuler, welcome to Nightline. Thank you. Welcome to South Carolina. Thank you. Uh, congratulations on having made that drive down South 85. 85, yes, uh, that was quite an experience today. Absolutely, absolutely. What do you What do you do? Uh, as you asked me before the program, what do you do? What do you do in the daytime? In daytime. What do you do in the daytime? I manage real estate. Oh, I've been yeah? managing real estate for well over 30 years. Uh, have a couple office buildings up in Raleigh, where I live, North yeah. Carolina, and down in Charlotte. Yeah. Yeah. I just heard of a of a gentleman today. In fact, I, I spoke with a guy today, who's moving to this area from Texas, and apparently, out there, it it's similar to the way it is here. If you put your house on the market. You, you better have your, your, your stuff packed. Is, is it that way in your experience? Well, uh, twofold, yeah, because the Raleigh and the Charlotte market are going crazy right now. Yeah. So in the housing market, for sure. But I manage office buildings, and it's the same thing. Seriously? Yeah. Uh, the, the numbers are going up so fast, it's almost like you can, you can put the numbers on a calendar and just watch them move up and up and up in value. What do you attribute that to? Well, I've lived in a lot of places, and North Carolina is a great place to live. South Carolina as well, great places to live. Uh, I, think, I think COVID may have affected some of the big cities to the extent that people left. Yeah. And they find themselves in more of a cozy environment, like where you're living here and up in, up in Raleigh and Charlotte. Uh, so I think that's part of it. It's a very attractive area to live. Yeah, yeah. How about being a, a Christian businessman in, in uh, what, what we, we're hoping that very soon we're going to be able to call uh, post-COVID culture. Right, right. I, I think talking to my friends and others, I think one of the things that they find, especially all the, all the guys I hang out with in church is that the, the environment that we live in is not near as hectic as a big city environment. Yeah. And it's just more of a family environment, a good place to have a church, a good place to plan a church, a good place to raise your family. And from the business perspective, it's nice doing business in that kind of environment. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Because the, the presence of the church yeah. In in the community, yes, uh, has to make a difference. It does, it does. Yeah. Now you serve as an elder in a local church. Tell me about that. I do. Uh, it's an honor to to be an elder because I, I truly believe in the biblical understanding of eldership and pastoring. It's it's not the hierarchy of you will see in some businesses where it's the the top down. It's truly serving from the bottom up. Mm. You know, mm. it, it, it's our role to encourage, to equip, to disciple, to teach people their spiritual gifts. Yeah. Not that you know, I, you being a pastor, I have so much um, gratitude towards you for what you do because I see you on the front line, and I see our pastor on the front line every day. I get to leave that in a sense of going to work, and but pastors are on the front line every day, and the eldership, to me, is there to support the pastors, but also to, to help support the body, yeah. to encourage them, because there's no reason for one or two or five people doing all the work in the church. The church should be rising up. Right in supporting what you're doing, the leadership, the vision that God has given you in the eldership. Amen, amen. And I, and I couldn't agree with, with you more. 
because uh, it sure is good to, uh, to have some folks with you on the front line. Not, not so much with you physically, right? because you've got your life and, and your wife and your children and, and your job. But uh, it just means so much when you have people that are with you. Yeah. Yeah, and what we do back home, the guys, we're, we're on a text thread, so we're communicating with each other through the day. And if there's a, you know, a prayer request or a serious prayer request, we're, we're communicating. So we're, we're, with the technology today, that, that helps us stay close together all the time. Amen. And it's just, it's really a blessing for us because we can stay on the same page. And when we're, we're with each other on Sundays, we already know what we're thinking because yeah. we've talked to each other through the week by whether it's a call or text. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I could, could not uh, have said it better myself because I, I'm blessed to, to be surrounded by some strong men of God. Yeah. And uh, so often, folks in the church, um, and this is not a disrespectful thing, but so many people in the church, they don't realize how important that those elders are. Um, sometimes those elders, brother, they talk me off the ledge. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I might would be serving time. <laughs> If if, yeah, if, yeah. if if it weren't for godly elders who right, said, right. just calm down, it'll right, be okay, right. it'll be okay. Yeah, I, I, I tell you, um, you you're, I'm laughing so hard because of an experience I just had with our pastor where he said, you know, I'm just going to do this. And I looked at him and went, no, you're not. Yeah. No, you're not. You're going to stand down. Yeah. No, yeah. you just just relax here. <laughs> this is absolutely yeah. amazing. Yes, this yes. is this it's, is absolutely you know, like, amazing. No, you're not going there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, thank God for yeah. the body of Christ, Scott. Why can't I get this Jesus thing right? Mm. That's the title of your book. Where in the world did you come up with that title? Well, interesting story because uh, I, I worked on that book for five years, five years. Yeah. So I have a family, I have a wonderful family, my wife and two kids and a full-time career. So I was writing that book most of the time early in the mornings before I went out to regular life. Yeah. So it took five years to put it together. And, and of course you go through the process of redoing, rewriting and cutting chapters out. We went through a beta group, my wife and I, to just get feedback from them. It was wonderful feedback and redid it again. Mm. And then finally came to a place of getting it published with Bold Vision Books, which awesome group of people, Karen and George Porter. But I couldn't figure out the title. And mm. Karen said, you need to talk to Rhonda Ray. She'll help you figure out the title. I'm like, okay. So we sent her all the information, the long proposal that we had to give to Bold Vision and I said to Rhonda, I said, I, I'm so knee deep in this thing, I can't figure it out anymore. And she comes back a couple days later, she goes, the title's in your introduction. Hmm. I said, where is it? Point it out to me. And she pointed it out. I said it. I said, why can't I get this following Jesus thing right? Wow. Wow. And of course, she shortened it a little bit because 10 years into my journey, I was a wreck. I was miserable. Yeah. And I couldn't figure it out. That's how it landed on that title. Love it. Love yeah. it. What, what was the most difficult thing to figure out 10 years into your journey about following Jesus? Well, you'll, you'll appreciate this being a pastor. 10 years into it, I was doing everything I was told to do. I was reading the Bible. I was praying. Didn't really know how to do that. Yeah. I was serving a lot. Yeah. Very involved. But I was miserable inside. I felt like a fake. I truly felt like, and I'm not that kind of guy where if I say something to you, you know, you're going to know it's me saying it. I'm not two sided, two faced. Right. I'm, I can't, I don't know how to do that. So I, what I couldn't figure out is how can it say in the Bible that we're supposed to experience the fruits of the Spirit, 
Wow. The joy, the peace, the love, the self-control, the gentleness, the kindness. How can we experience that? But I'm 10 years into my journey with Jesus, and I don't even know how to define those words, never mind walk in them. Yeah. That was my struggle. So, you're telling me, I think, that it's possible, very, very possible, to be involved in the church, but yet not really be intimate with the Christ, with the Lord Jesus. Exactly. Am I allowed to say that to you since you're a pastor? You can say anything you want okay. to say to me, right. brother. Yeah, exactly. You That's can, exactly you, what you I'm can saying. You say anything you want to say to me because I've got feet of clay just like you. Okay. All right, so we're on the same page. So, but, the, but I also want to say this part of it. But it, yeah, exactly. It, but it's not a reflection on the pastor or right. pastoring. Right. It, it is a reflection on the individual because the individual as a believer in Christ has a responsibility to figure this out. Yeah, yeah. You can coach, you can mentor, you can teach, you can preach. And those are the things you do. You got to do that. Yeah. You got to do that. Yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day, Jesus is not going to line me up with you if I'm in your church and go, well, you're accountable for your teaching, right? We sure. know that. I mean, sure. you're, you're held at a higher standard. Absolutely. But he's going to look at me going, where were you in this journey? Wow. Where did you put forth the effort in to see me, seek me? You know, Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, yeah. come to me, those who are burdened and heavy laden. I will give you rest. Yeah. Where were you in, you, in your life? Matthew six thirty three. seek first mm -hmm. the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, Scott, were you seeking me? Mm -hmm. He's going to come back to me. And that's what really drove this book because Jesus revealed to me how to get it right. Mm. And it breaks my heart now to see others not have it right because mm -hmm. I've been there. And getting it right is not me being right. I'm just walking that narrow path now with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, understanding your God, right. understanding your enemy, yes, sir. and yourself, it, it seems as if in, in many circles that it's exactly reverse. Oh, I like that. Yes, you're right, especially in our culture. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about me, right? Yeah. It's all about me. We, we basically don't have Christian bookstores anymore. Right, uh, right. Thanks, yeah. thanks to the, the internet and, mm -hmm. and, and Amazon and, and thank the Lord for that. Uh, we still have one in this area and I'm not doing a commercial for them, but I'm glad they're still here. But back in the day when we would go into Christian bookstores, I remember shelves of self-help books and Scott, I'm, I'm mm. not, not being critical, but, mm -hmm. but that's the world's way, yourself, your enemy, and then your God last. But, but I love the way you line that up. Well, if we don't have a focus on Jesus, it doesn't matter what we're going to be doing in our walk. There you go. It doesn't matter, again, how much we're going to serve, or it doesn't matter what kind of spiritual gifts we find out that we have. It doesn't matter. None of it matters. I mean, Solomon in Ecclesiastes was pretty clear about that, right? Yeah, yeah. Not, there's nothing new under the sun. That's Everything what he said. is meaningless. There you go. Okay, and here's a guy that had the greatest amount of wisdom ever, and he was the wealthiest. I think he probably puts even the wealthiest today to shame. Yeah, probably so. So he had everything, and God gave him everything to show that even with everything in the world about me. Yeah. It's not going to bring any joy. Amazing that you say that. We're, we're not, we're not uh, just scripting this thing. But what you just said, and say that again, just about joy. We, we can have everything in the world. Yeah. Just like Solomon did as an example. But 
we are not going to have joy unless we have Jesus. You are, unless you, we are, you are spot focused on, on him. Spot on. You've just introduced our next song because Danny Bishop is going to sing joy, well, joy. That's God's. To the world. That's God's leading. There's no doubt about that's it. That's right. And it's going to be God leading as he says. Thank you so much, Danny Bishop Joy, to the world. We're talking tonight with Scott Schuler. The title of the book is Why Can't I Get This Jesus Thing Right? Scott, for anybody interested in how to get more information on this book, what do they need to do? You can go to my website, which is scottschuler.org. It's got it on the website. Amazon has it on the website as well. Yeah. You can get it that way. Great. Uh, just randomly, without any, without any warning, let me okay. let me mention chapter seven, and I want you to respond to this. How does the Bible help me? Hmm. How does the Bible help me? It's our anchor. It's our anchor. The uh, prophet Amos talked about it being a plumb line. Yeah. In now we use laser beams to design a wall and to right. make sure that it's right. Fit. In the old days, you used to use a plumb line. And when you drop that string with the weight on the bottom, which was perfectly balanced, mm. you would put the wall against that line and be able to erect it correctly. Mm -hmm. But if your plumb line is off, the wall's going to be off, the structure's going to be off, the roof's going to be off, and it's going to end up falling mm. in, mm. right? If our life is not lined up against the plumb line, the scriptures that you have on your desk right there, yeah. if it's not lined up with that, eventually what's going to end up happening is our relationships will fail, our jobs will fail, our families will fail, 
everything is going to fail because we're not lined up with the truth. And one of the biggest challenges that we're here in the day, you being as a pastor, is what is truth? Truth is relative. Yeah, yeah. No, truth is truth. I mean, yeah. if, I, if I picked up this box and dropped it on a floor right now, what's going to happen? It's going to fall because gravity is truth. There you go. Right? It's going to fall. True. That word of God is the truth. We can't change it and alter it because of cultural differences or because we want to do this or think that or feel this way. We're, nothing's new under the sun. We were just talking about Solomon. Nothing's changed. Humanity is humanity. Yeah. But that's the truth. That's the standard we live by. You mentioned the word relative. Mm. That's, that's, that's a cultural yeah. tendency. Yeah. Or, or as they, they say uh, in reference to social media, that's what's trending. Yes. Cultural, yes. Culturally, uh, they're, they're talking about what's, what's relative. Let me ask you this. If, if, if that's the issue in regards to relativity, what about relevance? Is, is the Bible just as relevant today as it's always been? Or do we all need to get together and, and have a big meeting and decide how we can make the Bible relevant? Is, is it the issue with the Word of God or is it us, Scott? Well, I think people are getting together to see how they can make the Bible relevant. Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's a slippery slope. Well, that goes back to Matthew seven thirteen. When you When you first started tonight, you read, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the, the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many, many are on it. So when we try to take the Word of God and remove the context of the truth behind it, the relevance in our lives, mm -hmm. 2,000 years ago when Jesus was walking the earth to now, like I just said, humanity is not any different. Right. We're just dressed differently. We drive vehicles instead of walking riding horses or donkeys, it, but we're not different. Right. I look at the book of Judges, all the troubles that the Israelites wow. had in the book of Judges over a period of 400 years. We're going through this in America right now. Yeah. And that book was written thousands of years ago. Yeah. So the relevance is the fact that when, when you look, the reason why Matthew 7, 13 and 14 is so important to me. Yeah is Jesus, Jesus spoke those words and he made it very clear. You're either on the wide path that leads to destruction yeah. or the narrow path that leads to life. That book takes you down the narrow path. Mm -mm -mm. And that's when you experience the life, which goes back to what we were talking about, the fruits of the Spirit. Yeah. The, 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 the joy on top of the salvation in Christ, as you started out our program tonight, of the, the fact that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, the right. resurrected life in us. Right. But he doesn't want us to be a bunch of miserable, fake Christians. Yeah. While we're believers in Christ, he wants us to be exuberant and joyful and, yeah. and excited and self-controlled. And right. I'm, I'm just going to start preaching here in a minute. Well, so. I think you're doing all right. <laughs> I think you're doing all right. Let me read what you wrote here. The Bible grounds our faith mm -hmm. and provides instruction for life. Now, I know the answer to this question, but I'm, I'm going to ask you this anyway. Does it provide instruction for, for daily life regardless of what, whatever else is going on? Or is it just a Sunday kind of thing? Oh, no. No, it, 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 if, if, if I end up being a Sunday Bible Christian... Uh, I can tell you by Wednesday, I'm going to be pretty bent out of shape in many different areas of mm. my life. Mm. No, this is, a, this is a continual, for me, it's early in the morning before it lights, gets light outside and get into the Word, read my devotions, journal. That's how I build my days. Amen. 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 So to you, the Bible is the genuine, living and spoken word of God. Amen. Yes. Yes. What's your favorite verse of Scripture? Matthew seven thirteen and 14. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Love it. What, 
what would you say to me this evening, Scott, in the event that uh, I am that guy who just who just walked into the living room tonight, the TV was on, I was, to be honest with you, I, I was going, I was going toward the sports channel, but there was just something I really can't explain stopped me at Christian Television, and uh, and I can't explain it, but I have this this interest mm -hmm. in where I'm going to spend eternity. What would you say to me? I remember those days that I experienced that over 34 years ago now. Mm. And I would sit down beside you because that's what I love to do. Mm -hmm. I love to mentor and I love to teach. And I would say, there's nothing that you just heard that is from man or woman. Wow. That is God yeah. tugging at your heart. Yeah. And it is him that is trying to get your attention. And he's giving you an open door, yeah. a narrow gate to walk through. Take the step. Hmm. Now, I can give you some thoughts of my testimony and what I experienced, because you and I both know that salvation comes from the Lord. Lord. We're here just to shepherd people right. and lead people to Jesus, yeah. lead them into his presence. And it's God that gets our hearts right with him. Yeah. And that's what I would, I would walk through and I would ask them questions. You know, what are you sensing? What are you thinking? Yeah. And just, yeah. yeah, I struggle with that too. Yeah. And, and one of the things that I love to do with people is when they're walking through this, is just say, these are the struggles I had. Yeah. In other words, we're all in it together. Hmm. You mentioned that the book gives the reader some tools. Mm. Yeah. Tools. And uh, I'm, I'm not bragging about this. I'm not proud of this, to the contrary. But I'm not, I'm not a handy guy. Okay. I, I am that guy who knows who the guy is who can fix anything. That's all you need to know. So I call him. That's right. Whoever he is. Yeah. But uh, when it comes to having tools to rightly divide the word of truth, it is so encouraging to me mm -hmm. to just have access and, and to know that you, you don't have to be a graduate of, of some divinity school or seminary, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's right, right. great. But tools are there for the common man. That's right. Talk to me about that. I'm a simple guy. Yeah. I, I like to kind of keep things practical in order. Maybe that's why the understanding your God, your enemy, yourself, that's to me that's practical. Yeah. It's something that that we can grab a hold of and yeah. we can bring it into application. Uh, this book was written for, uh, actually when I was writing this book, I had, I had somebody give me the best advice that I could have ever received. And it was like, get a couple pictures of people in your mind that you are writing to. Love it. And speak to them. Love it. And that's how it came about. That's, Love that's what it would, so, what I would, the tools that are in there are, you know, when you're going through understanding your God, it, of course I bring out the Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, and I, use, I use an example of a movie production mm -hmm. because we all love movies. Yeah, yeah. So God the Father is the director. Yeah. Jesus the Son is the main character mm. and the Holy Spirit is the producer. Love it. Who is the one person of all three that you don't quite understand what they're doing on a movie set? It's the producer. Yeah. They're behind the scenes. Yeah. But they pull it all together. So the tools that I give them, it, the people, the readers, is information that they can bring into application in their walk immediately mm. and go, I can do this. It gives people hope. That's so good. Man, man, oh man, oh man, that is... That is so good. 
how personal is the producer in your life? What, is he, what does he add to your Christian experience? You know, that was the, the, the producer, the Holy Spirit, was the toughest of the three for me to get any type of understanding. And I've heard that from a lot of people that I spoke with, mentored, and friends in the church where they just couldn't figure out how the Holy Spirit works. And now I get a, a better understanding, a glimpse of, it because of my journey of just understanding the work of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. The Holy Spirit, it, again, I'm a simple guy, right? It, the Holy Spirit's work is to continually point us to Jesus. Amen. Everything He does is pointing us to Jesus. Whether it's conviction of our sin and sanctification, which we know is that separating us from our sin, uh, to, to walk in a, in a place of holiness with God, no matter what it is to, to, for us to experience the joy yeah. or the conviction or the direction, it's always to bring us closer and closer to Jesus. Yeah. And when you start picking that up and going, oh, wait a minute, I, I, I see this now, that's when you start hearing His voice and giving Him the credit that He's speaking to us about our journey with Jesus and us not taking the credit, thinking that's our voice. Yeah, 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 yeah. And humanly speaking, that doesn't make any sense, but spiritually speaking, it makes all the sense yeah. in the world because that's how we hear the voice of God is through the Word of God. Uh, we're going to go back to Danny Bishop, and he's going to sing a song now entitled, It's Called Christmas. Hmm. They try to get us to quit saying Merry Christmas. They say Happy Holidays, but it's Merry Christmas. This song is called, It's Called Christmas, with a capital C. Myself a mocha. The lady at the counter said, Happy holidays. I said, Thanks, lady. I'm pretty happy, but there's only one holiday that makes me feel that way. It's called Christmas. What more can I say? It's about the birth of Christ, and you can't take that away. You can call it something else, but that's not what it'll be. It's called Christmas with really. a Hear me now. God's got a law and we pretty much destroyed it. We were going to get judged. There was no way to avoid it. But Jesus came down and took the punishment for me. He did it for you too. Now maybe you can see why it's called Christmas. What more can I say? It's about the birth of Christ. And you can't take that away. You can call it something else, but that's not what it'll be. Salvation is found in nobody else. There is no other name by which you can be saved. The gospel is true, even if you don't believe it. I am not ashamed of the name above all names. God, it's called Christmas. What more can I say? It's about the birth of Christ, and you can't take that away. You can call it something else, but that's not what it'll be. It's called Christmas with a capital C. It's called Christmas. What more can I say? It's about the birth of Christ, and you can't take that away. You can call it something else, but that's not what it'll be. It's called Christmas with a capital C. Merry Christmas, 
everybody. On December the 1st, Christmas is coming. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Well, you just, <laughs> you just can't say it better than, than Danny sang it. It's called Christmas. And uh, during Christmas, Christ must be the focus. And in reality, for the Christian, Christ must be the focus in January, in February, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all throughout the year. Because he's not just the reason for the season but he's the reason. He is the reason. We've had the privilege of talking tonight with Scott Schuler about his book, Why Can't I Get This Jesus Thing Right? There's the information on the screen how you can get this book. Scott, I love this, this chapter here. It's simply entitled, why should I pray? Why should I pray? And you make this statement, prayer resets, love that word, life's chaos by bringing us into the presence of God. Tell myself and our audience for just a, a few minutes about uh, when you sat alone on a desolate beach in your own words. Mm. Talk to me. Well, I didn't see this one coming. Okay. Um, see, that's that's why I love all these questions, yeah. <laughs> all these questions that the guests fill out, and periodically I'll I'll yeah, even ask it one. It was good. It was good. But I I love to just. There was a, it was a special night for me. It was I was living in Orlando and I went to Port Canaveral, which is right on the coast, and I uh, stayed at a campground overnight, uh, fasting and praying and. This was, uh, this was right after my 10 years of misery in some parts in my walk with Jesus, not being able to get it right. But then there was an experience I had with God where he just started really drawing me close mm. to him. Mm. So I intention with intentionality, I, I went to the beach just myself and I, I remember uh, just <laughs> singing and dancing on the beach and yeah. it was just me there was no one out there it was huh. a very unusual setting and the, the moon was bright so I could you could see you could see the shoreline and uh, sweating and just writing in the in the in the sand with my finger of different things that I was hoping that I could experience from God but the funny thing was mm. that I got done and it was probably close to midnight and I'm sitting in, I go to a lifeguard stand. Yeah. And I sit up in the lifeguard stand and I literally verbalize this. I said, God, can I walk on water? No one will see me. It'll just be me and you. I didn't expect the response, but he responded. Yeah. No. No. I went, okay. <laughs> Now, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> I, I, I was just waiting on your answer. Go ahead. Go ahead. It, go was, ahead. it, was, it, was, such a, it was such an authoritative. Uh, my dad, he's 87 years old, love him to death. And, and he's, he's always had that authoritative voice in him. Mm -hmm. uh, he paled compared to the father when the father said no. Yeah. And I was like, okay. I, I didn't know what to do. So I just, I had my journal and I'm just sitting there. And then he says to me, he goes, I'm dredging you. Hmm. And I look to the left and that's where Port Canaveral's at. And Port Canaveral's where they bring in all the ships for Disney and yeah. the big ships. Yeah, yeah. And there was a dredger in that port right there. And I've been to this place fasting and praying all the times and I've never seen a dredger. There's a dredger dredging in that place. And it was digging out the area for the port so they could bring the ships in. And that's what God said to me. He said, he goes, he goes I, I want to bring in the big ships 
but right now only the small boats can come in. And what he was talking about, and I knew it, because you know when God can speak to you a word, yeah. it can be one or two words, but it really means a lot. Right. But if I say one or two words to you, it's not going to mean as much right. in humanity. And I knew what he was saying. He was talking about future ministry. And he proceeded to share a covenant with me that night. And that was 20, gosh, 22, 23 years ago. And it all started with a time of prayer. Amen. Amen. How should we respond to God's nose? Cautiously. <laughs> yes. Uh, y you know, I, I've learned that no's are good for me mm. because it's God's boundaries to keep me from going to the wrong place. If it just hindsight, I guess what could have happened if I literally walked on water just like Peter did? Yeah. Oh, I probably would have told everybody. And it would have been very gloating. You know, being able to look back on it, it would have been gloating. And him telling me no was, Scott, it's not about you doing these great and miraculous things. It's about you seeking me. Wow. That's what it's all about. Wow. And, you know, I wish I could tell you that I got it that day and I never felt fell off of that. I never went back to the wide path of destruction, but I can't. Yeah. I can't. And I don't know who can. Yeah. Only Jesus walked the straight and narrow forever. Yeah. It is people like you and I that God has so much grace and mercy. Oh, yeah. That when we mess up, He's yeah. there to pick us up, just like he picked up Peter when Peter started to sink. He picked him up out of the water, not condemning, but encouraging. Yeah. As, as you were talking, my mind went to Pilgrim's Progress, mm. John Bunyan's book, and uh, so much symbolism there, but so many reminders between that book and your book, why can't I just get this Jesus thing right? Because it's all about a journey yes. for the Christian, right? Yes. Yes. And that's, that's what I try to do with this book is to give the reader a GPS. Mm. And I, I like to mentor. I mentioned that. So the one thing that we've been hearing is that people are reading the book and they, they, they feel like I'm like sitting right next to them, kind of coaching them through this walk, through mm -hmm. this process. And that was the goal because I'm not going to be a tour guide and mm -hmm. leave somebody at the trailhead and just let them go. Mm -hmm. I'm literally walking with them through the journey. And a lot of times what I'm doing is I'm pointing out, stay away from this. Don't do that. Make sure that you're, you're doing this to get back onto that narrow path. Yeah. You know, we're like in, in part two or part three, excuse me, understanding your enemy. Where are you vulnerable to Satan? And, and that's one of the things that this book does, because there's a lot of great Christian nonfiction books out there on discipleship, a lot of great ones, and I've read a lot of them. But this book points out the enemy and how the enemy comes against people to prevent them from walking in freedom with Jesus. How does he do that? Mind control. The flaming darts that Paul warns us about in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Yeah. What did he say? Our, our, our battle is not against flesh and blood. Wow. The principalities of the air. And that's what God has taught me over the years of how the enemy worked against my mind mm -hmm. to get me to go back into the old sinful nature. Mm -hmm. And I would end up, it's almost like the bully in the playground mm -hmm. where he kicks you, beats you, you're down, and then he yells and spits at you. Yeah. Well, that's what the enemy does to keep us from walking in freedom. So God was showing me a strategy of how the enemy was working in my life for years. So now I revealed it in this book to try to help people see it and go, oh my gosh, there is freedom in this journey with Jesus. There's life. And as you, as you said a while ago, there's joy. Yes, absolutely. There's, there's real, live, honest to goodness joy 
in the Lord Jesus Christ. Scott, would you mind just praying tonight for for those that that may be struggling, mm. that may be seeking, some are even starving to death spiritually. Would you pray for them as well? Yes, yes. Now, Father, the first uh, the first thought that comes to me is uh, people that are watching and listening, and they may be struggling in sin, and, and I would say to them, hmm. that's not who you are. Hmm. That is what you've done. And I pray, Father, that your grace and your mercy will just hmm. fill people in the presence and that you will give them hope, because without hope, we're nothing. Even as believers in Jesus, we're nothing. And I pray, Father, for those who are completely lost and maybe accidentally or coincidentally turned on this program and now are wondering, why can't I just turn it off? That you draw them into you, Father, that you, that you use this time in their lives to, uh, to save their soul, mm -hmm. to bring them into freedom with you. And Father, as you know, we, we you, you were instrumental in writing this book to the second and third seed of the parable of the four seeds that your son Jesus describes. And mm. for those that are in the second seed, I pray, Father, that they will continue in their journey with Jesus and they'll move into the third seed and then move into the fourth seed and be true, faithful followers of Jesus Christ, Lord God. And I pray, Father, that you will instill hope and the love and the joy and the purpose, give people purpose. Father, we need you now more than ever Amen. in our culture. Amen. More than ever. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Scott, I sincerely just want to tell you how much I appreciate you coming down Thank this you. evening. Thank you. And how much I've, I've enjoyed uh, just hearing about your journey. And uh, the Lord's really spoken to my heart tonight through so much of, of what you've, you've said uh, from your book. And this is why I love your book is because it is basically about this book. That's right. That's right. It is a companion to the Bible to point everybody back into the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. And, and certainly you don't need me of all people to, to sell your book or to try to put some kind of spin on it. But I was just thinking as you were, you were talking, this would be great for a small group. God just spoke through you. It really would. Yeah. It really would. Yeah. Um, small group, uh, discipleship group. Yes. yes. I'm, I'm, I'm writing that. I'm are in the you process really? of writing that. Yes. So, so how, how far along are you? are you? Are you writing a study guide for this book? Yes. Okay, good. Yeah. But I'm going to, it's 22 chapters, and each chapter is about a 15-minute read or so. I'm, I'm going to take the 22 chapters and shrink it down to about nine to ten weeks. Good deal. Yeah. Been a number of people that have said that. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, yeah. It's you're, confirmation. Yeah, you're very, very welcome. It's just really, really, really good stuff. We've got about two minutes. Okay. Has this not been a fast hour? It's been an extremely fast hour, and I've absolutely loved talking to you. Well, it. if I may just borrowed the phrase from Chick-fil-A, it's been my pleasure. There you go. It's been my pleasure. There you go. It really has. And it's been our pleasure to share with you uh, what God has given this man, our brother in Christ, Scott Schuler. Uh, we're going to be taking a short break in just a moment, but we will be back after that break with more Nightline. Remember, God has a plan. He has a tremendous purpose for your life and he really does love you mm -hmm. but you see there's this thing called sin that all of us can relate to because we're all guilty as sin and we're guilty of sin yeah. that keeps us from experiencing that eternal life but you see Jesus died for our sin he was buried and he rose again and we have the responsibility to receive Him. I pray that you will do that tonight if you've not done that. Mm -hmm.
Don't you go very, very far at all because unless Christ comes back, we will be back on more of Nightline.